Hi, this is Dave, and welcome to To The Table, a series of videos where I review and discuss various board and card games, looking at them from a family perspective. Today, we're going to be taking a look at The Hare and Tortoise from Yellow, and this is the third installment in their storybook series, and so if you look here, it looks like it's an actual book where it sits on the shelf. And this is a racing game for two to five players, in which you're going to be wagering on these various characters in the game, and uh, trying to play cards to and to kind of spur on your guy to win the race. At the end, whoever has the most victory points wins the game. Let's take a look at this game, how it's played, and I'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts. Okay, let's take a look at the components that come in the hare and tortoise, and the first thing we see here is the racetrack, and there are 11 different tiles that come with this game, and they're two-sided, so you can shuffle them up, and you can create your own different race course every time that you play this game. Uh, we have the starting line here, we have the finish line here, and we also have the winner's podium here to place first, second, and third finishers. And we have our five racers here. We have the hare, the tortoise, the big bad wolf, the sheep, and the fox. The game also comes with uh, these cards here, which are called your first bet cards. And so they're filled with images of the different racers of which you're going to be rooting for. There's also going to be a stack of these playing cards here that have the different characters on them. And I'll cover that in the gameplay. And then we also have a uh, player aid here that's going to help you determine how each of these guys move because they all move differently. We have a first player token, and we have these little turbo tokens that can be used in variant play. Okay, let me get this game set up, and I'll show you how it goes. Okay, to uh, get this game set up, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to shuffle up all of these starting bet cards, which are these right here, and we're going to deal one face down to each player. And I have this set up for three players here, and they can look at this. They're going to keep it... Uh, hidden from all of the other players, but this is who they are betting on to win the race. So we have the tortoise right here, player number one, we have the first player token right here, is going to be uh, rooting for the tortoise. Player number two has the big bad wolf, and player number three has the hare over here. So once we have that, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build the racetrack. And so you take all the tiles and you shuffle them up and you can choose either side and you can create your own race course, which I have done right here. So we've got straight away, we've got some curves, and you're always going to have two of these uh, streams in the, in the course, just so you're aware of that. You can't avoid those. So once we've done that, uh, we're going to deal out seven cards, these race cards, to each player. And so what we have on the inside here is uh, each of these cards has an image of the different characters that are racing, and we're going to introduce the characters in a second, and we're going to choose one of these uh, who is going to be our second bet. So who we're also going to be rooting for. So one we get dealt to us, the other one we get to choose. And I think that player number one is going to go for the fox here. And I'm not going to tell you who player the rest of the players are going to be rooting for here. You'll have to find out as we go along. So we'll play this one here. Okay, so we've done that. Now we have our two animals that we are going to be uh, betting on here. And so let's meet these characters. And uh, first thing to know is that this is going to determine how they're going to move. And it also has the number of cards of each type in the deck here. So there's like 18 hair cards all the way down to 15 sheep cards or lamb cards. And each one is going to determine how they move. So we look at the hare here, and he's pretty fast. However, if um, when a race can uh, when a race condition is triggered, if there are four hare cards played on him, and he's in first place, he's uh, he's so cocky that he's going to take a nap and he's not going to move. We've got the tortoise here, kind of slow and steady. Uh, slow and steady wins the race. And uh, but if he has four cards played on him, he's gonna he's gonna kind of kick it up a notch, and he's gonna move a little bit extra. Now the big bad wolf, he's a big guy, and uh, if you push him too hard, he's actually going to uh, he's not gonna move to his full potential. But he does have this ability to howl, and he can scare some of the other racers. So he's kind of neat. 
we have this lamb here. Now this lamb is going to run like crazy. It's going to run really, really fast. However, um, he's going to get thirsty and if there's a stream, he's going to stop no matter what to get a drink. And then finally, we have the fox here who is just going to move at a steady pace throughout the whole race. So you've got five different styles of racing here and they're all going to be competing against each other. Okay, now that we're ready to start the race here, um, we're going to be playing cards from our hand in order to uh, inspire these guys to move. And uh, so um, what we're going to be able to do is play as many cards as we want, but they have to be of the same character type. Um, so we can't, like, I can't play like, I can't play a hare and a tortoise. I can only, I can play one hare or I can play, I mean one tortoise, I can play a couple of hares out of my hand. If I wanted to, I could play these foxes. So I'm gonna, we're gonna play cards out of our hand until two conditions uh, occur. Either we're going to have four uh, cards out on the table between all the players of one animal type, or there's going to be a total of eight cards played all together. And that's going to trigger the racing phase. So let me show you a round of how this is going to work and then I'm going to, uh, we'll go about how they're going to move here. So um, let's see. This player wants to kick things off, and um, and we're going to play we're going to play these two hair cards here. So I'm going to place these two down in front of me. Once I play the cards, I'm going to draw back up to six cards in my hand. Next player over here is going to play. Uh, let's see, we're going to play two of these sheep cards here, and so we'll draw back up to two cards over here. And finally, the third player here is going to play some cards, and they're going to play a couple of tortoises over here. So right now we have six cards in play. So uh, we're going to continue around now. The next player here will be able to uh, play um, some cards here. Uh, we have six. So we look at what we're playing at, and we're see we've got the fox down here, and we've got the tortoise. So. Uh, let's see if we can do anything to get the tortoise out in front. So I'm going to play these two tortoise cards here. And this is going to trigger uh, the racing phase. I actually would have done it um, either way. We've got four tortoises on the table, but we've also now reached, um, we've reached eight cards in play. So the way that we're going to resolve this now is we start on this card and we're going to move. Each of these is going to move in order. So we start with the hare and we look to see how many cards have been played by him, which has been two. So if we have one to four cards, he's going to move forward two spaces. So off we go. There goes the hare. He takes off like crazy. Let's look at the tortoise now. If he had zero to three cards, he's going to move one. But if he's got four, he's going to move two. So everybody's kind of um, rooting for him. So he's going to move out two spaces also. The big bad wolf, he didn't have any uh, cards played. He's not going to move. Neither did the fox. And then now we get down to this little lamb down here. And depending upon the number of cards, however we play, he's going to move one extra one. So what's going to happen is he has two cards here. He's going to move three. So one, two, three. So the lamb is taking off like crazy. But that's okay. Uh, each of these cards, uh, each of these characters have their own little unique quirks about them. And so kind of evens them out. Even though he's uh, he's out in front, he is uh, he's going to get tired pretty soon or thirsty and he's going to have to stop and get a drink. So once we've done this, we've uh, we're going to pass the token over to the second player and they're going to continue on. And they're going to uh play some cards here. Uh what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play these these three big bad wolf cards here and one of them has a howl symbol on there. So what's going to happen now is that that's going to trigger that uh any other characters they're not going to move this turn, so the wolf is going to be the only one that's going to move this turn. And uh, so now, uh, because the other ones are going to be too scared to go and find a place to hide. So one of the best ways to do it is if, if there's cards in your hand that you don't necessarily want, you can play those. If it's something that you're not rooting for, you can get rid of. Like, here's a good way to get rid of a couple of hair cards here. So we'll play those two hair cards and draw them up again. And so we have three cards here, four, five. Um, we want to hold on to our foxes here, but we'll play this. 
we'll, we'll play that card right there. We'll play that wolf. And so now we've triggered a racing phase here because we have four wolves on the board. He's going to howl. Nobody's going to... Uh, Nobody's going to move except for him. But if we look here with the big bad wolf, if there's four cards played, he's going to move how many cards? Minus one. So we kind of pushed him a little hard. He's only going to move three spaces. So one, two, three. So he's not going to be able to get out too far ahead of anybody. And again, we're going to move these cards and uh, put these in the discard. And we're going to uh, continue on now with the next, next player moving around. We're going to continue around until we get them across the finish line. A couple things that I wanted to talk about. I talked about the big bad wolf and his ability. If the lamb uh, runs no matter how many spaces, even if he's going to run past the, uh, the stream over there, he's going to stop and get a drink. If we have the um, hare was in first place, if he's over some of the other, some of the other players, maybe we're back like this, uh, and four hare cards are played on him and even though he's in first place he's gonna take a nap so he won't move so it's kind of a good way for you to strategically play cards to manipulate all of these different animals and so uh, if we play this out and we kind of get them across the finish line here maybe this one finished first this one and uh, maybe the lamb goes there so if the, the wolf was the first one here he would go up here on the top we'll put the fox here in second Whoop and the lamb down in third and the rest of them are kind of working their way through here uh, what's going to happen is even though you play card you can still play cards in your hand um, even with animals that are on the podium so the howl will still take effect and it's a good way for you to cycle through your deck so once we have these three cards these three guys up on the podium so we have first second and third we're going to reveal all of our bets and see where everybody finished so we have over here, this player here, dub, um, we had the fox and the tortoise. Well, the fox finished in second, so we're going to get three points for him, none for the none for the tortoise. This one over here, we have a double bet on the wolf, so we're going to get five points for each one. That's going to be ten points. And finally, this one over here, we had a double bet on the hare, and he didn't finish, so they didn't get any. So... You're going to continue to do this, and you can play a series of races, and you can play as long as you want, and at the end, whoever has the most points wins. All right, let's talk about the hare and the tortoise here, and this being the third installment in this storybook series, this is a delight to see this game come out, and this particular series in general has been uh, coming up with some really, really cool games that are oriented towards families, but there's more in there that even adults can enjoy this and they can bring it out themselves. So uh, let me start off with the overall presentation of this game. I mean, if you look at it and you put it on the shelf, it looks like a book. And um, finding even like a bookmark there, and it looks like pages here. And on the inside, everything lays out very nicely. And the nice thing is here, you have a very, very large player reference that you could actually set off to the side while you're playing and you can look at it and can be seen by all of the players on the table. So we look at that, we've got nice uh, double-sided tiles with really cool artwork. And uh, so this is going to add a lot of replayability to the game and you can always change how the course uh, looks. You can make a straight line if you wanted to. You can mix it up and have them curving all over the place. So um, kids are going to get a kick out of that looking at how they're going to race. It's not always the same thing. Oh, start here, end here. It's always going to change. So it's going to give a good table presentation that way. Uh, you can play multiple races and every time it's going to look different. We have uh, some really cool... Uh, pieces here they're all wooden and they give you little stickers to put on there and uh, it's nice to see that they took the hare and the tortoise and they threw in three additional characters to make this into a racing game because you never see the big bad wolf in the original hare and tortoise uh, tale and we've got a fox here and we've got the lamb so we've got some really cool characters in here and makes for a really really good uh, a good game here uh, the game comes down to hand management uh, you know you're playing these cards and the artwork on these looks really really good I, the artists that yellow has been uh, getting lately has been phenomenal I mean you look at this card here for the tortoise that is just amazing the tortoise one here's the hare you have uh, you know the fox so we've, we've got these really really 
awesome looking cards that you're playing in your hand and you're going to be using them to essentially manipulate the situation of what's going on in the racetrack. You have your, you have your um, animals that you're betting on and so you're going to want to try to do the best that you can to play cards out of your hand to get your animals across the finish line first. And so uh, the way that you're going to play these cards um, you know, you're going to look at all of the different characters' uh, abilities, and you're going to learn over time that you're going to be able to get rid of certain cards when certain things happen. For example, when the wolf howls, if it's the first one, if he leads off with that, it's a really good idea to um, kind of dump some of your cards in your hand that you don't want. Or if you're holding one of those cards and you kind of see where somebody else may be getting ahead, pop that one out and uh, it's going to scare all the other animals so, so you're going to have this uh, you're going to strategically be able to play these cards so it's not just a simple kids game oh we're gonna play these cards and make the animals move around so uh, there's more to it uh, one of the things that is really good with this game though is that there are variant rules in there to make the game either more difficult or easier for little kids and um, if you, they give you these little um, turbo tokens these little things here that are going to give you plus two movement for each of the different uh, the different racers on the board and you're going to place them in specific spots and as you're placing them here each of the characters is going to move however many uh, however many cards that you place so uh, it's going to make it a little bit easier for younger players, so they're not going to have to to know. Well, this one's going to only move this kind of this many spaces, or this one's going to move this one more or less. So there is a variant to play for younger players. Overall, I find this to be a uh, a very 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 enjoyable game. Uh, there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. So. Uh, Definitely don't pass this one up just because you're thinking that this might be a kid's game because uh, adults can play this too and throw this out there and kind of um, reminisce about fairy, you know, like the fables when you're a kid and also have a an underlying strategic card game that's underneath that's going to uh, give you satisfaction and a wonderful gaming experience. Alright, that's it for now and join me again next time as we take a look at another game and we see how it makes it to the table. Thank you.